It seems that a lot of you people really like the why do so many people play this riff wrong video. And the question arose that I should make it a series. And I always listen to the community. So here is episode two about arguably the greatest rock riff in music history, Money for Nothing. As you can see, this is one of my all-time favorite riffs, but I never got it down 100% until today. Oh, and to those calling it pretentious of some kind, please see it as a guitar lesson. Teacher always needs to have criticism one way or another. And that is just the way we learn. We start off shitty and in the end we all hope to get better. Money for nothing, a riff with so many subtleties that it's really difficult playing it 100% correctly. It's not hard getting the general idea across, but mastering it really is another story. One thing is that Mark Knopfler really is the king of dynamics. In this riff, for example, there is a lot of switching between blazing power chords and really subtle staccato muted notes. And in these little tiny notes lie the magic of what makes this riff truly great. So let's find out why do so many people play this riff wrong. Let's go. So here are some examples I found. Hey, don't talk through the intro, dude. He's playing. Next example. This is pretty good, but it's not there yet. So you can hear every note is played with the same velocity, which can make it a little bit boring. You can put so much more into this riff besides playing the right notes. Alright, next example. Uh, okay, let me show you how we can get real close to how Mark Knopfler is playing it. Okay, first we definitely need a last ball. Try it out yourselves, maybe it works. Alright. So I'm playing over my camp ramp with a lot of compression, a wah pedal at a fixed position and some reverb. I read in an interview with the sound engineer of that day that it was just something magical that happened with the sound and they couldn't recreate it afterwards. So it's not a wah pedal they used, but if we mortals want to recreate the sound, just use a wah pedal, it sounds good. All right, here we go. You can ditch the pick, I don't know why I'm holding it. Okay, I won't see that one again, I guess. Right, so the fingers really help getting the staccato sound out of the guitar. So you can use your thumb and your index, or your middle and your index finger, or both. We're starting with the first bar, which is a G power chord played over here. And then we continue. That's not the difficult bit of this song, everyone got that right. And then we have a little descending riff. And at the end of that little riff is where you can add some of that magic. Okay, he plays an open D string, but very muted and very staccato. A lot of tabs show it as a muted note, but it's definitely not muted. You can really hear the D note. And then the middle two strings open, and then a muted D string. So it sounds like this. So, and also the dynamics. So between the power chord and the muted note, there is a big difference, but there's more. The third bar, that one is very nice. So we start off with a muted note, that's the last one from the previous riff, and then the middle two strings open, 
and then a D note, and then fret 3 on both strings. And those two notes, ooh, they are great. So it's just two times a D string. Both notes sound different. They are not two times the same notes. They sound differently. So I think he's using his thumb and his index finger to play the notes. So maybe with one he's using his nails and with the other he's using his flesh. But point is you should play it quiet, muted, but not dead. So no dead notes. You should hear the D, but short and not too loud. So the dynamic is really pumping in that part. That sounds really good. <laughs> All right, the next part is a B flat power chord, which you slide up to a C, minus the octave, I should say. Last one is staccato. So. And then an inverted power chord, you can say, so only the fifth and the octave of C, back down to three and back to zero. Nothing special about that. So those are the first four bars and in total they sound like this. Okay, that sounds really good. The next four bars are a little bit the same but there are some differences. You start off with an harmonic, the D string fret 5. And playing an harmonic on fret 5 it's the same as the open string you play it on two octaves higher. So this one is a D. So that's good to know, right? And the next part is a really legato part, which is the opposite of staccato, you can say. It's played tight, notes in succession of each other, with no rests in between. And then, after that part, there are two G strings. So the same as we did with the D strings earlier, but now G strings. And the G strings are again played very quietly. When you play the riff, we're coming from fret 3 and when you release your index finger, the strings are ringing out a little bit. So the D string can ring out and you can play the G string and then you can hear the D string underneath it. And that's not bad, that makes it sound a little bit filthy, which is good. Followed by an harmonic on fret 4 of the D string, which can be a little bit difficult, but it's there. Trust me, just touch your finger gently on the 4th fret, but don't press it down. And that note is an F sharp. Sort of. <laughs> uh, it should be. And then we go back to the same part, a little bit different. Open strings, followed by a D string open. Pull off from G, the 3rd fret G string. And then we play a power chord without the root note of F to G. And that is basically the entire riff. He plays it twice the second time. It's a little bit different, but that's not where you can win or lose this riff. So it's all in the little things, the little notes in between of the major parts. So let me play it one time up to speed in total. Let me play it one time slowly. Slowly can be more difficult than playing it at speed. Hmm. And that is basically the entire riff. So. Once you get it down real properly, it's very awesome. And one thing I really like to say, I know there's gonna be comments like, you can make this riff your own, what a bullshit or what a pretentious guy. To those I wanna say, sometimes it can be really useful learning songs really 100%. Because there are a lot of subtleties which you won't acquire if you don't learn these pieces really, really good. This song, for example, he's a master in the subtleties and the dynamics. If you learn those dynamics real good, you can copy them and use them into your own playing as well. 
If you don't care about the subtleties, you will definitely learn less from playing a song like this if you would just play it to the point where it sounds okay. But if you want to evolve and if you want to improve yourself, that's really a good thing to do. Anyways, it was Paul and if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Hit that button, I would be very grateful for that. And if you have more song ideas for this series, let me know in the comment section. Have a wonderful day and I'll hope to see you next time with another video. Bye.